Hi there, I'm Michaela, CEO and producer at Psychoforge Studio Switzerland. We are a small but highly efficient team working on a high fantasy transmedia universe called Erafin. Erafin exists outside the boundaries of a specific product. More, it's a collection of different experiences created across several media. From comics, audiovisual short stories, games, and even a novel is currently being written. And all those products have something in common. They are settled in the same world with the same set of rules, shared knowledge and notable characters. So players of the game may find the one talisman that lies on the table in the comic book or the secret passage that has been described in the novel. Another fact to highlight is that Erafin comes with four languages spoken by the four main races. The humans, the dwarves, the Uturi, kinda orcish tribes, and the elves. The interesting point is that those languages come with dedicated grammar, vocabularies and phonetics, and thus can be written and spoken by interested people. Well, enough about Erafin for now. Let's jump to the most ambitious installation settled within these lands. Return to Nangrum. Since 2018, Psychoforge spends 60% of its time and resources on a fantasy adventure game for PC and consoles called Return to Nangrum. Besides being embedded in a deep, dark, dwarven lore with a lot of drama and thrilling twists, the game awaits with interesting RPG, survival and sandbox mechanics. However, how can a small team of just a few developers and artists realize such an ambitious project? Especially as an indie team, two crucial things are lacking, budget and time. And those two things have severe implications for the workforce of a project. We, or indie teams in general, need to get creative, not to let the lack of time and budget be reflected in the overall quality of the final product. At least not too much. So production value is key. However, this can only be achieved with clever workflows and efficient pipelines. Let's have a quick look at how our character and animation pipeline evolved during the project from the initial slow-paced manual workflow to the final highly streamlined pipeline with short iterative cycles. Our initial pipeline, wait, let's not call it pipeline, our initial approach relied on custom characters created from scratch that all needed to be manually rigged and skinned with a lot of human effort. While this perfectly works, the time required for just one character to spawn in the actual game is insanely high and thus highly cost ineffective. Further, such a workflow is static and rigid. Each change causes a lot of additional work that needs to be done again. That was one of the main reasons why at first we wanted to steer away from having characters in the game besides the bare minimum. This has changed when we've discovered the products from the illusion. After a short R&D phase, we managed to create a highly effective pipeline where our artists could work with their favorite tools like ZBrush and Blender, fueled by the Character Creator 4 and iClone 8 ecosystem. Let's follow one of our characters on its journey through this pipeline. This is Ilmalir, the Hunger, an ancient shadow creature that led to the first onslaught of undead beings in Nangrim's east. Conception The concept for Ilmalir was created in Photoshop, artisan craft as usual. Base shape creation then, based on the concept, an artist roughly creates the base shape of the body in Character Creator 4. The various sliders offer nearly endless possibilities to create almost every humanoid body. Try doing as much body shape work here at this stage. Doing this will save much time later. Rigging Well, yes, usually there's no need to rig anything when creating humanoid characters within the CC4 ecosystem. At least when there's no armor. And for the case that you want to feed in a custom character to the pipeline, you could kickstart things with Accurig, an AI-based auto-rigger. Anyways, let's go to the next stage. Sculpting. 
The high poly sculpting of the character's details gets done in ZBrush. This is super cool, since ZBrush can be seamlessly integrated into the pipeline. It's as easy as the click of a button, and most likely your artists will be happy because they can work with the software they are used to. Texturing After the details have been sculpted, the low poly and the high poly meshes get sent to Substance Painter. There, bake the maps you need and texture the character as required. When working with humans, it pays out to send the high quality skin textures from Character Creator to Substance Painter as starting base. Mocap Before going to the mocap stage, we always test the characters using animations from the extensive Actor Core library. This is a great way to block your animation flow and test your character quickly. After we've defined all animations that we need, we prepare a mocap session. We record all the animations with a Rococo suit, which gives us excellent results, especially for crucial parts such as the fingers and hands. Animation cleaning. Once the animations have been recorded, we send them to iClone and clean them with the various available tools. Generally, there is no need to clean and filter them externally. With version 8 of iClone, expensive tools such as motion become obsolete. Having a powerful animation pipeline in-house opens brand new possibilities for cinematics and cutscenes. Animation verification After the cleaning stage, we can easily test the character and its animations directly in iClone with Motion Director, which is basically a built-in character controller. Test the walk cycles and transitions right in iClone. Game Engine once everything is in place and verified, it's time to export the character and its animation data. First, we export them in FBX containers. Then, in Unity, we create an avatar for the rig and use the built-in retargeting system to match Unity's humanoid rig. And that's it! This is how our character pipeline works! Don't forget to wishlist Return to Nangrim on Steam! Thanks for watching! See you next time! Mountains in the west, my lord, bid me go. Wait, team? Can you quickly come over here? Uh, seriously, who did the animation renders yesterday?